Hi there, welcome to my wolf boarding and paw skinning video here everybody. I'm going to take and uh, cover some ground here on finishing up uh, these this series of wolves that I caught here. Uh, covering a lot of the basics here, if you will, but uh, yeah, that's always kind of interesting when you really kind of get down to the nitty gritty. Such a big difference. In skinning and dealing with fur that is uh, going directly to the fur market for uh, right like say example a coyote for the fur trim that they use the coyote largely for versus skinning an, an animal for taxidermy now the wolf the benefit that you have in dealing with the wolf is all, all of the parts that you're dealing with are, are large enough that they're they're manageable. I've uh, any time that I've done really small critters, I've uh, either just handed them directly to the taxidermist, you don't have to go or just skinned them out. Close but uh, yeah, again, the the wolf is big enough that uh, all of these pieces, uh, you know, most anybody can take and deal with. Working on these lips here, I found that uh, what I what I really wanted to do is, and, and I've said it before in my other videos there, is uh, take and skin everything out. You know, when you're taking it off the animal, make sure you get everything off the animal. Skin those gums right up to the teeth and take all them lips because the taxidermist can do a way better job finishing that face off by, uh, by having those, those lips there. And uh, a little bit further in there I'll show you my little invention that I tried out worked out not too bad
Yeah, the thing about working on a wolf that I find uh, it's pretty user friendly is that everything is larger and um, so it's pretty easy to get at everything. You know, skinning out those lips. You know, you'll see later on, I take and I finish the edges off. I uh, basically got the lips skinned right out there. But uh, once I get to putting it on the board and laying everything out to dry, I'll, uh, I'll take and I'll trim the edges of the lips because there's uh, some meaty, tissuey stuff there that has to take and get off. And now, uh, you know, working on the ears, it's kind of the same thing. You know, these ears are big enough. There's enough junk there that uh, if you just take your time, you can take and skin those ears out pretty good. That uh, front edge of that ear where it comes into the middle of the skull there, there's that meaty stuff. Just skin all that stuff out. and Yeah, I find that uh, for, for myself um, and then dealing with the taxidermist, I mean, it, it is nice if you can take and give them an animal that is properly prepped and... Um, and I see when those guys with their little scalpels, when they take and they skin out the front, the, the, the inside of the ear, um, I just, I'm not, I'm not that, uh, I, I don't have those hands for that. And what they do, uh, what, what they tell me that is sufficient is to just skin the back end of the ear out, which is pretty easy. Uh, in this particular case, though, what you're trying to do is uh, you're not trying to take and bust open the front end of that ear. you got to leave all that in there. But, uh, yeah, just kind of slowly get that cartilage skinned out. And then, obviously, there's all that meat um, in, and around the, in and around the edges of the ear that, uh, that get exposed here. And you'll take and you'll skin all that stuff off, of course. And I don't know. For me, it's kind of tough to explain. You know, you can't, you can't explain your way around every single nuance and detail. Um, but my kids are pretty awesome there with the camera. They got her, uh, pretty hard to hide anything, and and I'm I'm giving you everything that I got there. But you 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 wanna, you wanna try to skin all that meat and all those tissues out of there so that you're only left with the cartilage, and then. Once you take and flip that hide around, you can fill all that up with borax and draw all that moisture out and, um, you know, get that hide dried so that at least it's not going to slip. And then whatever the taxidermist wants to do later is to take and um, rehydrate the fur and skin out the front end of that cartilage. Um, it'll all be there for them to take and work with. So... I've got uh, uh, on wolf number three here so far, and uh, and I didn't really I didn't really pick up any speed from one wolf to the next, but you know you you just start getting a little bit handier. It's like anything you just uh, and when you do them in the ro in a row, um, as long as the guy has the time, you just get better and better at it. I found these ears were a little bit tough pushing, um, and I couldn't really define the edge, and that was that's kind of the risk there. There was one wolf that I managed to take, and uh, I just opened up about a half inch um, of line around the outside of the ear, but a little half inch spot, like my finger didn't even come through, but so I was really trying to work that edge, um, but yeah, they were tough pushing. And uh, it is what it is. Like my buddy always says, the taxidermist is going to fix that. I don't, you know, I don't like running with that as a motto. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, that has to be the reality for the taxidermist. Uh, I, had, uh, I had one of the wolves there. The one that I really felt bad about was when I was uh, skinning out the face with my post flesher. And... Uh, I think it was right at the eye. Um, I just took and I, I forget exactly. I, it wasn't from pressure. I think it was from I just I just caught that uh, 
that sinewy material uh, of the eyelid. I just caught it with my post, and I, just, I tore a little bit of a hole in there. And it, the problem in the, in the on the head <clears throat> and on the front of the end of the paws is the fur is so short that uh, yeah, sure the taxidermist is. Got to take and fix everything, but the problem is when that fur is so short, um, it's pretty hard not to deal with something that's not going to take and uh, leave behind some sort of a telltale mark. But uh, at any rate, yeah, I got those ears done, got them out, and uh, just going to get on these paws. I saw one guy, uh, what he had is. Uh, I forget the kind of fish hook that he used because when I was doing this, I realized that uh, I was missing a component that would just help me um, be just a little bit better at it. Because every time, the way I hung these paws here, it worked out just fine. But um, Barrett's our cameraman today. He's doing a good job. Thanks. Thanks, Barrett. Um, Barrett's the guy who is, uh, he's probably one of the kids that has got the most interest in this sort of thing. So the next wolf uh, that we do, Barrett, you're going to do? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not quite yet. I should have left this paw a little bit longer. But as I was saying there, I, with this wire that I was pushing through, it worked out pretty good. But what I ended up having to do is having my skinning gloves on and handling that wire and then opening it and retying it for each paw. It, uh, I realized that I need a hook, a proper fixed hook that I can just take on and off of my winch. Um, and not have to take and open and close and tie that. It would just make it a lot more convenient. It, this worked just fine, um, but it just ended up being a little bit of a, a little bit of a hindrance. And handling it so often, you're you're risking just uh, busting open your gloves and then, you know, the routine. Then you got to change your routine and you got to go and put different gloves on and that sort of thing. So yeah, I saw a guy. He had a great big hook like a shark hook or something. I don't know what it was, but it looked like it was, uh, oh shoot. Like it was a two or three inch hook. It was a, I don't know where he got that thing from. He's obviously, obviously shopping in a different tackle store than me, but, uh, um, but that's something that I'm going to look into just for the convenience factor of it. I'm working these paws here. Um, I ended up, I put a little nick in one of the toes there. And again, I always try to kind of run with uh, efficiency and reliability. Um, but uh, with efficiency, you know, when you're trying to, um, you know, manage your time properly, sometimes you get a little bit ahead of yourself. And, and again, I'm no pro at this. I mean, I, I don't do this. Uh, like as far as skin and, pro, skin and paws, um, you know, I'm not the guy. Uh, I'm sure if you go to a taxidermist and you watch a taxidermist skin these paws, you'd get a you'd get a whole different kind of show. Um, you know, it's just like anything else. Guys that take and do it for a living or do it right on do the it all the time knuckle, right on the um, claw. would be able the to take and produce a better product. But close. the reality is, I think the way that I did it, I mean, it was pretty it, it was pretty right efficient, and it's just a little bit. Uh, oh, don't let go. Well, one thing is for sure, I'm getting tired. This is the third wolf today, and it's wearing me out, Barrett. But you just take and skin those, skin each one of those toes, skin them down to that last knuckle, um, right at the end of each toe where you've just got that knuckle and claw left. And, Get them down to there and get that last knuckle off and away you go. And uh, 
I tried to make sure I've seen guys skin them different ways where they'll take and uh, they'll cut right through the pad and uh, again I, I think I don't think you're really unless you want to take and show an animal up in the air with their pads showing like uh, like a crazy cat mount or something like that you obviously are going to take and challenge your taxidermist a little bit more you know by having having him having to uh to sew those pads up but the reality is um once that animal is on the board and you're having them dry and people do ask me they're like well why do you take and hang your animals upside down well there's a couple of reasons um but as far as the drying reason goes the closer to the floor you're going to take and hang the face of an animal the slower it's going to dry and uh you know for those of you most of you i suppose that have turned an animal um even if you take and skin that face of that critter out real nice they get pretty hard uh turning there when you over dry them so um with the paws it's no exception the same applies there How long is the video so far, Barrett? 32 minutes, almost 33 minutes. Holy! Ahead of time? 30 minutes, Barrett. Mm -hmm. 33. Is that too long or what? Is that too long, Barrett? I don't know. You don't know? You gotta, you gotta ask yourself that. Huh? You gotta ask yourself that. I got, okay, okay. Well, uh, let's say that, uh, how about this? When a person hurries too much, I think that's a good way to make mistakes. Yep. Okay, we agree on that? Uh, kind of. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just try to take and work at the pace that it takes to take and get the job done and hopefully get the job done right. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay. But yeah, the uh, taking those paws and uh, you know deciding whether or not you're going to cut through the pad or not. If you do not cut through the pad, it's, it's just going to give you a little bit of a bigger challenge. Now, and it'll take and to board them. Have you uh, work a little harder on getting those pads turned the next day? And it all depends on obviously how long you take and dry. Um, when you if you overdry because you're basically dealing with the temperature of your skin and room and uh, the amount of air movement and the amount of humidity and uh, you know likely you kind of know what works for you and what you really have and, and that'll uh, hopefully help dictate how long you're able to take and and dry an animal now the thing is uh, anytime that you take and go and board an animal in the morning if you can't get that baby turned before the uh, before you go to bed at night, now you have a serious risk of what, you know, if you're running into that time frame interval during the night where it should be getting handled, um, 
you know, drying it doubly as much as it needs to be, boy, it's uh, turning ears like that and turning paws uh, where you're not cutting through the pads, it's going to take and pose a significant challenge. But having said that, what you want to do there is if you, uh, if you get a little bit over dried, what you can do is uh, you can either just take uh, damp cloth, rags, newspapers, stuff like that and moisten them and just take and wrap them right over top of everything that you have uh, and leave them for um, 5, 10, 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever you need to, depending on how hard they've been over dried. And, uh, and you'll be able to get to turn on that stuff. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of, uh, really, um, not that big a deal. And like I said, uh, you know, the whole business of the paws and the pads, um, I don't know that it's, uh, that, that it's, uh, necessarily a deal breaker, but it all, all has to do with what you're planning on doing with that animal. Um, and what I did with these pads is I took and I, uh, when I, turn that animal fur out, uh, both of both the ears and all the pads, I just filled them right up with borax and I worked that borax in there and worked that in there um, and uh, just to take and pull all the moisture out. So I got ended up with a really, really good finished product and uh, uh, yeah, I was pretty happy. It's just about spending the time, being a little bit diligent and spending the time that it takes to get the job done right. do not know what that mark is from I uh, I've got uh, marks on uh, I think one of the other wolves if not both I'm not sure if they actually here during the course of their struggle if they tangled slightly and got their like had enough torque on there that it, it left a little mark because they weren't they weren't uh, they weren't tangled up with snares these wolves but uh, it doesn't look like it was from a snare I don't know what it is I really didn't give it too much thought but um, but uh, I took and I used uh, muskrat stretchers there for to do the tail um, uh, to pin out the uh, the front lower belly end no, there, the uh, right between the legs, and it worked out pretty good. You know, you got a shallow enough uh, little chunk of board there that you can take and work it in behind the hide there. It wasn't obtrusive at all, so uh, yeah, that worked out pretty good. 
and then I just used the smallest muskrat stretchers that I had to do the front legs because I had to take them, put the uh, the front tip of the stretcher uh, into uh, right up where the elbow and the front leg is closed off. So that yeah, worked out. You just had a little accident here. <laughs> yeah, there you go, eh? That's how that goes. Gonna do this face bear and come over here. I'm gonna take and uh, put this guy in here. Man, my kids are doing such an awesome job helping me out there running the, oh, the camera. Sometimes I hear the dialogue that they're trying to engage in, but I'm so engrossed in my work there that I, I mean, stuff just goes right over my head. I feel bad. Um, but Barrett's doing an awesome job. Him and I, he's got a corn snake. It's like, I don't know, three feet long or something. It's a constrictor. We're going to take and uh, post okay, first of all, uh, feeding it live quickly. prey here. He feeds it like once a week. Dude. And uh, we're going to do a little video. Uh, it's pretty cool, man. It's the real deal. It grabs its prey and puts its big chomper right on it and then coils around it and restricts it. So we're going to take and do that. Barrett was pretty pumped. I said, for sure, man, it'll be awesome. It'll work really well on my channel. Um, that's what we're into. That's what we do. Um, but getting back to those muskrat stretchers, they worked out pretty good. Uh, I didn't really like that those nails, the, the muskrat stretchers, they were a little bit thin. And some of those nails kept on wanting to pop out. So I don't know what I'm going to do there. I'm going to do something a little bit different there. But um, but this wood block, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, and I've, I've done this in the past where I knew I, I had to fight. Um, with pinning these lips because if you just pin the lips closed now, you end up closing that sucker off so bad that uh, it's not only hard to turn, but you actually don't even have enough room to properly um, dry out all those lips. So, And I see different guys, they, they wedge little pieces of wood, and I just thought that I had the idea that I could make this block, um, and it worked. But I was very near in danger of uh, still having closing that off sure. far enough that my block being uh, too large that I couldn't hardly remove it. Yep. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to remodel that and make it more vertical as opposed to um, the Great Pyramid of Egypt, if that makes any sense. I'm going to take those uh, those sides and, and have them be more straight up and down um, and not tapered up to a point um, Sounds like so a that uh, when those lips are being pegged to dry, they're standing more straight up and down. They're not coming up to a point. It, that should make some sense. But that, I, I tried this. Um, I liked it. It worked out pretty good. And um, just going to make a slight modification there. Um, because I, I, I do feel that it's important, and I've, ha I've seen bad taxidermy work, and it really sucks. You take a great animal that you have, and, um, you know, whoever's dealing with it, if they don't do those lips properly, and you want to take and display that mouth being open, because it's always nice having a... I mean, a predator doesn't have to be, as a work of art in taxidermy, it doesn't have to be killing something or be put into any kind of a ferocious pose, but... Uh, with the mouth slightly agape, 
you know, just to take and show its armory, you know, it's just breathing, panting in a pose, let's say. Um, it's kind of cool. I find it's cool, you know, to be able to show the teeth. So well, if you want to do that, you've got to have those up. lips. You've got to have all that skin there. You've got to give that stuff to the taxidermist. Oh, um, so, yeah, that's kind of my idea there, Going trying to get that rigged up. So, look at them a little bit. But, uh, yeah, here's kind of the finished product. So, uh, turned out pretty good. Hope you guys like the videos. I'm going to be posting uh, right away here. I'm going to be posting some some very cool coyote footage that I have left of this winter. I'm currently already beaver trapping, um, already into animal damage season, uh, animal damage control season, and uh, had a really awesome year. Met some awesome people, hanging around with really cool people, and uh, I just can't wait to uh, get back into it here this coming winter. So enjoy the rest of the video, and I uh, hope you guys all have a great summer. today oh I'm pretty happy about that that's awesome that's awesome so yeah that's it so tomorrow I get to take and turn them it's gonna be a fun day all the hard work is done tomorrow we get to see the fur Barrett and I for one I'm excited so hopefully it turns out to be a decent YouTube video. I'll see how I can take an edit that. I'll speed some stuff up and get this thing compressed into something that's, oh, I don't know, maybe like a 20 minute video, 25 minute video, something like that. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I haven't done, like I said before, I have not done many that I've boarded for taxidermy. I've skinned a lot for taxidermy, but they go straight to the taxidermist balled up and frozen here you go and um, I've also done animals where I've just taken the entire without even touching it and uh, you know the taxidermist like let me take care of it I'll scan it the way I want it you know when you're dealing with uh, this area here uh, a little bit on the feet and the pads uh, you know all of that kind of stuff the ears and the eyes and all that and, and I made some glitches the reality is these wolves here, all of my stuff is for sale, but the reality is uh, my wife has already claimed these wolves. Uh, it was just a good practice and a good refresher for me to take and, uh, and do some taxidermy skinning and boarding and fleshing uh, just to kind of keep things sharp. Made a few glitches here and there, but uh, uh, Cheryl wants to take and produce more gloves and some nice big gauntlets and a wolf and uh, so at any rate uh, I hope if that helps anybody great uh, uh, if not if it uh, 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 you know shows you how much I have to learn well then there you go then there's that as well um, but hey you gotta keep on keeping on push forward <laughs>